Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 earnings conference call of Dishman Carbogen AMSYS Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Arpit Vyas, Global Managing Director. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, moderator. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to uh, DCAN's uh, yearly conference call. It has been an exciting year, uh, full of uh, um, uh, eventful things. Um, we would like to briefly mention uh, some important things um, before we mention the numbers and then move on to the Q&A. Um, since uh, past couple of years, uh, my, uh, our uh, CEO, uh, previous CEO, Mark uh, Griffiths, uh, had uh, requested uh, his desire to uh, retire. Uh, so it was me and him who were, uh, who were, who were communicating, and um, we said, okay, fine, then let us plan for it. At which point in time, uh, we were identifying the possible candidates who can, um, uh, who, can, uh, uh, who, can who, who can able to fulfill his spot, at least as a CEO of uh, Carbon Analysis. And uh, after uh, almost a uh, year and a half uh, worth of evaluation, uh, both of us uh, were uh, decided that uh, 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 our uh, VP commercials, uh, Pascal uh, Vigmanye, uh, was a perfect fit uh, as a candidate. And uh, about a year ago, we had asked uh, 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 Pascal uh, if uh, he had the desire to take over uh, Carbon Analysis as a Carbon Analysis CEO. And uh, after uh, uh, much deliberation, he gladly accepted, and we were extremely thankful to him for this. And um, uh, he is uh, from uh, 1st of April, um, as of this year, uh, he has been, uh, he, uh, he, his contract has been renewed as representing the C, uh, CJM CEO. Um, and uh, we have uh, allowed uh, uh, Mark to, uh, as planned, retire. Uh, he will be uh, available to us uh, till the 5th of August. But uh, his uh, uh, um, uh, uh, his retirement has been uh, granted, and he is uh, happy uh, for uh, with all of us to allow him to spend uh, time with his family and to do something for himself now. And we all would like to congratulate him for his well-deserved retirement, as well as wish him all the best uh, for the future. Uh, coming to the business side of things, uh, um, from uh, the perspective of the EDQM uh, challenges, uh, we are very glad to say that we have completed almost uh, 85 to 88 percent of the EDQM related collective actions, and we are on track to uh, extend the invitation to the European authorities. Uh, as early as uh, uh, October or November this year. Um, uh, in the meantime, we have been successfully resumed the key major products as of uh, this year to start manufacturing uh, for the major customers uh, like uh, Janssen and uh, Mylan, which is now Beatrice. Um, and uh, at the same time, we have uh, been working very hard on improving the operational efficiency and working uh, on operational excellence where we have made, uh, uh, we have planned to make uh, many changes in terms of uh, the way we currently manufacture uh, by upgrading the equipment, which allows a lot of um, uh, 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 which allows a lot of operational efficiency to um, uh, to take place, which will help us increase the out yearly output substantially. Uh, and the main uh, agenda.
agenda would be behind this would be that the uh, people will be able to perform much better than to perform in a laborious way. So we are going, uh, we are adapting uh, more of an uh, automation uh, uh, route in terms of uh, upgrading our facilities. So that plan is already uh, on the way and uh, some of it is a, a part of the EDQM as well. And um, uh, it is going very well. So all in all, a lot of uh, exciting things uh, to look forward to. We would like to get into the Q&A uh, as quickly as possible. So I would like to uh, briefly hand over the call to our uh, new CEO, uh, congratulating him for his appointment as the CGM CEO, um, and uh, ask him to please uh, introduce uh, uh, himself uh, to all of you. Um, and then uh, uh, Mr. Rashid Dalal will be able to give you the numbers uh, and then we move on to the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Happy for, uh, for your nice introduction. Uh, I, I wish to join you uh, with some of uh, uh, all the work that uh, Mark has done uh, over those uh, years, uh, bringing the Carbon and MPs uh, and uh, <coughs> The other uh, wish man cabinet to where uh, oh, we are now. Uh, so sorry yes. to interrupt. If you can speak closer to the device or use uh, uh, the handset mode, uh, your voice is a bit muffled. Okay, is it better again? Hello. Is it better like this? Yeah, Hello? this is this can is better. So yes. Okay, sorry. Sorry, so th th thank you, Alpit. Sorry for for uh, for the start with the uh, with the bad microphone. Um, I wanted to join you to uh, emphasize uh, all the work that uh, Mark has done uh, so far uh, over the years, bringing cabbage MMCs and Dishman cabbage MMCs to uh, uh, where we are today. Uh, some few words about uh, myself. Uh, as uh, Alpit mentioned, uh, I'm not new to the company because I, uh, I work for Cabbage and MC since now 10 years as the Vice President of Health and Marketing. I work very close with, uh, with Mark Griffith over all those years. Um, I'm coming from uh, um, a clinical background. I am chemist by education and I completed this uh, uh, university studies with uh, a master degree in business uh, back in the 90s. Uh, since that, I work for different uh, companies uh, started at, uh, at Sanofi, then moved to uh, Philips Electronics, then uh, back to uh, to the pharma industry, uh, working for different CMOs, uh, US, Japanese, uh, and European based uh, companies. And I joined uh, Cabbage Analysis in October uh, 2011. Um, Overall, <coughs> over all those uh, uh, ten years as uh, at uh, Carbon and I I have experienced uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, different uh, momentum and uh, coming back to uh, uh, the situations uh, right now uh, over the last quarter of the year and this uh, <coughs> final uh, uh, year end, we can say that uh, although the market is still very strong in many aspects in the pharma industry. We still face some, some challenges with uh, uh, the COVID situations uh, in China, for instance, uh, or uh, some challenges in terms of the pricing because of the, the cost of, the, of the energy and, and fuels have, have been increased. However, uh, uh, although the, the, the global situation is not that easy, we succeed to, to perform quite well uh, by uh, reaching uh, uh, very high number by the end of financial year, as uh, uh, Ashil will uh, tell you later on. And uh, uh, we, have, we can still uh, count on a very, very strong uh, customer base with very, very strong uh, partnerships we have had uh, with uh, uh, some, some customers in Japan, for instance, as you have heard. Uh, in the in the past, we have a, a very close collaborations where we have been uh, a, a facility, a dedicated facility for our drug maker that goes with an ABC uh, product, uh, which is already in the market in, in, in Japan. Uh, Beside that, we also very strong over uh, 
the oncology uh, uh, arena, which is the biggest uh, uh, pharma sector with a, a, a very uh, important growth and a growth that is uh, is going to uh, to reach uh, records uh, for for the next few years. So uh, from that perspective, from a business perspective, we do uh, uh, extremely well and we have a very very strong pipeline. With uh, uh, by the end of uh, uh, March, more than 100 millions of the, of the three strength of the, of the project into the pipeline. So uh, even much more than uh, last uh, year when we ended the, the, the year uh, uh, 21. Uh, in that in that perspective, uh, we also uh, see a, a lot of opportunities. Uh, Rising up from uh, from the, the, the Chinese market, um, as I <clears throat> just mentioned, we are facing a bit of uh, of, uh, of of issues uh, over there. But uh, we have been very lucky because we have very very loyal uh, people uh, at uh, uh, Shanghai site. And uh, just for 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 your knowledge, uh, most of our people have uh, have stayed on the on the on the plant for. Uh, for several uh, weeks and days, uh, sleeping at the at the facility to enable productions to carry on and to deliver our customer. So it's very very much appreciated from uh, from all our customer base, and uh, by this behavior we demonstrate uh, that we we can be a very global company, uh, completely connected with our customers. Um, and uh, that's the end of my. Uh, introductions and, and and market perspective, and I'd like to hand it over to uh, to uh, to Ashwin for for the financial number. Thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, very good evening to everybody. Um, regarding the financial numbers for the for the quarter ended March 31, 2022, uh, we posted a net revenue of 569 crores. So this was a record uh, revenue for us uh, as far as the quarterly performance is concerned. As far as the EBITDA is concerned, uh, there were obviously a lot of one-offs uh, that were charged in the P&L as a provision in the current quarter. So it is better to look at the adjusted EBITDA rather than the reported one. Uh, the adjusted EBITDA for the quarter stood at uh, 84 crores, uh, representing 15% of the, of the net revenue. Uh, the cash profit for the quarter stood at uh, 70 crores. As far as the yearly performance is concerned, uh, we posted a revenue of uh, 2,140 crores as compared to 1,912 crores for the full financial year 21. Uh, the adjusted EBITDA for the full year uh, stood at 394 crores as compared to 274 crores in the previous year. Uh, so there has been a substantial improvement over the over the previous financial year. Uh, the cash profit for the full year stood at 340 crores, as uh, compared to 254 crores in the in the previous financial year. Talking about the uh, uh, the one-offs in the in the current quarter for which uh, specific provisions were made, uh, we can go item by item. So as far as uh, Carbogen Ansys AG is concerned. Uh, we had booked a provision of 2.46 million Swiss francs for uh, for certain impurities that were observed in, in one of the batches for a for a customer, and uh, this was an impact of uh, in rupee terms of roughly about 20 crores, uh, which has been provided for in the current quarter. We obviously are are currently uh, evaluating the options of uh, of raising an insurance claim because this is fully covered by insurance as well as uh, raising a claim against uh, against the vendor because uh, the, the the root the root cause for this particular impurity was uh, was a defective supply by uh, by one of the vendors there was also a, a one time provision for pension and leave uh, that is classified under employee benefit expense and this is to the tune of uh, of about 12 crores uh, so these are the two uh, major impacts uh, in Carbogen and Fizz AG, uh, which has actually impacted uh, the EBITDA performance for the quarter. Apart from this, in Carbogen and Fizz AG, uh, bulk of the revenue in this quarter, out of the 45 million of revenue that Carbogen and Fizz did, 30 million was attributed to development revenue, 
and uh, most of it was related to preclinical phase one, phase two, where the margins are uh, comparatively lower as compared to the phase three revenue. Also, within the uh, within the projects that were closed during the during the quarter ended March 31, 22. Uh, there was a lot of uh, revenue that got accrued because of the invoicing of, of the material component in the development project, uh, which obviously come at a much lower margin. Uh, specifically, they come at a margin of about 7%, and uh, hence that had a, had a negative impact on the, on the overall margin at Kabuz and Amphis AG. But, uh, you know, as we have mentioned earlier, uh, uh, it, it is difficult to, to see the performance on a, on a quarterly basis. And, uh, you know, as, as these projects keep on moving, as we keep on invoicing and as we keep on booking the revenue based upon the percentage of completion, we would see the, the, the margins coming back to uh, 20% in the, in the coming quarters. As far as uh, the one-offs in Carbogen Ansys BV, that is our Dutch business is concerned, there is a one-time provision of, uh, of four crores for the for the soil reclamation. Uh, so we need certain cleaning for the for the soil at at the particular site uh, because of the chemical usage. And uh, you know it, it's been done after after a span of almost five years. Uh, so that is a four crore of provision that has been built in. Uh, one of the major impacts that we also saw in Carbogen and BB as well as in our UK entity was a significant rise in the power and fuel cost, mainly caused by the, by the Russia-Ukraine war. And uh, uh, this deep hike in the prices of gases and fuel uh, amounted to, combined amounted to roughly about 8 crores. So, um, you know, what we try to do at our end is to is to pass on the increased cost, uh, whether it's related to power and fuel or otherwise to our customers. However, uh, since this was an unprecedented event which happened in the last quarter and the purchase orders for most of the customers were already booked, it was not possible to pass on this cost in the last quarter. Uh, what we believe as, is, is that as, this, as the contracts with our customers come up for renegotiation, as they are right now, we would be able to pass on most of this cost to our customers in the revised contracts and in the revised purchase orders. Uh, lastly, there was, uh, there was a change or there was uh, an interpretation from the IFRS perspective for, uh, for certain IT project costs, uh, which were incurred in, uh, in, in a French entity, as well as in Carbogen Ansys Innovation, uh, amounting to almost 18.4 crores. So we had implemented uh, the Microsoft Dynamics 365 in France, and, uh, and, and according to the new interpretation which has come out from IFRS, uh, all of the implementation costs along with the license costs uh, for this kind of projects have to be expensed out rather than getting capitalized and amortized over a period of time. Uh, so we have taken that one-time hit of, uh, of 18.4 crores. All of this put together amounts to a total impact of about 62.34 crores as a, as a one-time impact, uh, which if added to the reported EBITDA, uh, amounts to 84.3 crores as the, as the adjusted EBITDA figure. Uh, this adjusted EBITDA figure obviously does not uh, have the impact of the, of the lower margins on account of the, uh, the, the material invoicing for the development projects that I explained to you, but that is also another factor because of which uh, the margins that Carbos and MCS AG are good. Talking about the, uh, the segment-wise revenue and EBITDA performance, um, Carbogen Ansys, uh, Carbogen Ansys AG, uh, had, uh, had a, a margin of 14.7% for the fourth quarter of FY22. Uh, this translated into a full year margin of 18.7% as compared to 19.1% in the corresponding year uh, FY21. So if you see on a yearly basis, the margins are, are more or less comparable, uh, but because of the one-offs that I explained, 
the EBITDA margin for the quarter uh, looks to be subdued. As far as the UK entity is concerned, the EBITDA margin stood at 13.8% for the quarter. Uh, this translated into 17.6% for the full year, and uh, this compares to 19% for financial year 21. On the marketable molecule side, Carbogenensis BV uh, reported a margin of 30%, 29.5% for the quarter, translating into 30% for the full year. Uh, as compared to 34.5% in the comparable year FY21. The reason for the decline in the margins at uh, Carbogen and CIS BB uh, has to do largely with more sales of, of cholesterol as compared to vitamin D analogs in the current financial year, which we believe uh, is again a moving piece. And uh, as, as the sales of vitamin D analogs keeps on increasing, we should again see these margins uh, in the range of 32 to 35 percent. As far as the, the revenue uh, breakup is concerned, uh, Grants India for the quarter did a revenue of 48 crores as compared to 23 crores in the comparable quarter last year. Uh, so this is again, uh, um, you know, reinforces what we, are, we have been saying that uh, the India operations have been improving uh, both from an operational standpoint as well as from a revenue standpoint. For the full year, India cranks did a revenue of 160 crores as compared to 53 crores in the comparable quarter, uh, FY21. Um, so that is a significant improvement. Grand Switzerland, France, and China put together did a revenue of 375 crores in the, in the fourth quarter of FY22 as compared to 342 crores in uh, Q4 of FY21, representing a 9.4% growth. Uh, this figure on an annual basis translated into 1,371 crores uh, versus 1,280 crores in FY21, uh, representing a 7% growth. Grants UK uh, did a revenue of 25 crores as compared to 21.6 crores in Q4 of 21, representing a 16.5% growth. For the full year, uh, this revenue stood at 118.8 crores as compared to 98.6 crores uh, for the full year at 21, representing a 20% increase. Carbogenensis BV, our Dutch business, uh, reported a revenue of 63 crores in the fourth quarter as compared to 72.7 crores, uh, representing a decline of 13% in the quarter. However, as, uh, as you would recollect, uh, Carbogenensis BV did exceptionally well in the first two quarters because of significant amount of sales of cholesterol as well as vitamin D analogs. And hence, for the full year, the revenue stood at 306 crores as compared to 262 crores, representing a 16.8% growth. As far as the others within marketable molecules is concerned, uh, the revenue stood at 57 crores for the quarter and 185 crores uh, for the full year. Um, uh, so in all, we did a revenue of 569 crores for the quarter and uh, 2,140 crores for the full year, representing a 12% growth over FY21 numbers. Uh, apart from this, uh, we also had reported a couple of exceptional items uh, which are below the profit before tax, uh, profit before tax. and these exceptional items relate to uh, one research expenses that we had uh, earlier capitalized, which have been charged to the PNL as well as uh, certain inventory which was, uh, which was outdated, which we have written off uh, in the PNL. So these were two uh, major one-offs as far as the exceptional items are concerned in the PNL. I think with that, uh, I'd like to hand over the call to uh, Mr. Sanjay Manchmudar, our, uh, our independent director. Thanks, Harshil, and good afternoon. Uh, good evening to uh, all participants. So, as Herschel explained, there were quite a bit of one-off provisions, which are actually non-cash uh, provisions, and uh, that's uh, 
done on a very conservative basis to ensure that uh, there is no uh, baggage that we subsequently face. Uh, I do un understand that even on a normalized basis, there is a bit of a minor compression on the EBITDA margins in Q4, even after we consider the adjusted EBITDA, which is at around 15%. But I believe that going forward, because of the typical issues relating to revenue mix that we saw in the Q4, particularly in carbogenesis, and more importantly, now with the EDQM more or less behind us in Baula, and therefore India claims also uh, expected to post a very smart recovery in the fiscal 22-23. I think 22-23 looks like very much a normal year that we should see both in terms of a decent normal growth uh, and a significant improvement in profitability expected uh, uh, as compared to the, uh, so if the top line uh, may grow, say just around by 10 odd percent, the bottom line of the profitability should improve much more than the top line in the current 2223, uh, which should signal as a return of complete normalcy. I think with this, Harshil, we can open the house for Q&A. Sure. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the lineup, Praveen Srinivas from Samsung AMC. Please go ahead. Hello, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so one question I wanted to ask was if you look at your uh, employee costs over time, right? So when FI19, they were at around 35% of your sales. And uh, now they've obviously increased while the sales have not moved as much. So how do you sort of think about this employee expenses going forward, given the growth that you're expecting for the next two years? How, how would you sort of think about the employee expense growing on the current base? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Praveen, uh, for your question. So as far as the employee expenses are concerned, um, you know, obviously there has been uh, uh, quite a bit of recruitment over the last uh, 12 months. And uh, this is obviously considering the projects that are, that are going to be up and running in the next uh, 12 months or so. So, uh, you know, we would see much of these employee expenses translating into revenue over the next, uh, over the next uh, two to three years time. Having said that, uh, one of the other factors, uh, you know, which is a major contributory to the increase in the employee expenses is, is obviously the forex impact because 90% of our, of our employee expenses are, are from uh, are from Switzerland, France, UK, from all of our overseas entities. And uh, all of these uh, employee expenses, while in the local currency, uh, you know, uh, they, they, are, they are paid in the local currency. When the translation happens in India in INR, uh, the forex impact on these expenses is inbuilt into, into the financial numbers that you see. So overall, uh, you know, we do believe that there would be a, a steady recruitment of people even going forward as, as we start these new projects. Uh, but but many of the of the uh, FTEs have been recruited over the last uh, 12 months, uh, which would yield into into revenue figures in the future. And uh, maybe Pascal, you want to add something? <clears throat> no, you you, uh, you you summarize very well the situation. Uh, we are facing some uh, some uh, some challenges uh, in in some affiliates, uh, uh, and uh, which we look at the French affiliates of the overall cost of, of salaries increasing because we are starting uh, uh, the, the process to hire people. Uh, prior, we finished uh, 
the time because we need those people to run the qualification and in the meantime we, we, we don't have the, the revenues that, uh, that are coming in front of that but it will come the, 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 the plant is going to operate for sure so uh, yes there is there is here and there some increase some due to the kind of a, a very low unemployment, unemployment rate that uh, we are facing in, in Europe. So you, you can see some uh, inflation in, uh, in some uh, uh, salary from new hires and some others, like I said in front, that you are shipping a number of positions uh, in front of, uh, of a new facility that is going to be operational in a in few, uh, in few months from now. So uh, uh, yes, it's a challenge, but as you said, uh, in the next few months, we are going to recover and transform those uh, increase in cost into revenues uh, in some extent. And uh, with the gap in terms of pure cost, we are going to transfer this to the, uh, as much as we can to customers. Okay. Uh, another follow-up question on that. So how, how should we think about sort of the path to profitability for the crams business, right? So like in FI19 and FI20, you used to do around like 15 to 17% uh, EBIT margins, right? So how, how should we think about that going forward? Like how, you know, uh, we'll get there again and, you know, how should we sort of, you know, think about what, what would be sort of driving that profitability, right? Is it just an increase in sales? Or is it like, you know, something else that you're thinking of, lowering of costs, you know, how, how should we think about that? Uh, definitely, that, that's something we are working on. Uh, we'd like to, to come back to uh, uh, what we could call a, a, a standard uh, performance in terms of profitability uh, in, in our business. Uh, as I was saying, we are also facing a number of, of, uh, of issues uh, in terms of uh, uh, increase of cost in terms of uh, cost of energy, for instance, that are really, really affecting uh, our, our PNL right now. And those costs, uh, we are valuable uh, to retransfer it straight to our customers because the, the pace we have on the on project and the, the, the pace we are running business between the time you get a, a, a commitment uh, with a purchase order and you start a project and you finish a project. It's very difficult to uh, to uh, to retransfer the, those uh, those uh, extra costs straight forward. So you have to, to to wait for the next wave of uh, of extension. So uh, uh, there is definitely a lag between the time we see those uh, those uh, extra expenses affecting us and the time we can recover uh, uh, those costs. So definitely we work on that. There is clearly some. Uh, some instructions to uh, to the different sales, sales teams to renegotiate wherever possible uh, pricing and and uh, and uh, project and project costs with uh, with, uh, with customers to uh, to uh, to move uh, uh, the needle in that part and uh, further down the line we also look at uh, different type of operational efficiencies that we can apply in our uh, plans to uh, to basically work on our uh, internal costs to improve uh, uh, our uh, internal profitability. So uh, uh, playing on those two leverage, we should be able uh, to go back to a normal profitability, I would say. And, and, and apart from that, Praveen, uh, you know, if you see over the last two years, um, obviously the India operations has, has not been yielding, uh, well, uh, the, the, the EBITDA is negative as, as we speak right now. So as, as we see the ramp up in the, in the operations of the India business, uh, both from Naroda as well as from the Babla side, we would see the, the margins at a, at a group level also increasing substantially uh, because, you know, India is the, is the largest manufacturing setup that we have and in terms of EBITDA margins, you know, it has always been the, uh, the highest contributory in terms of the percentage to revenue. So, um, you know, as we, as we see the ramp up in the India operations happening in the current financial year and going forward, that would also have a positive impact on the group EBITDA. Sure. So just to follow up on that, so uh, would you say that as utilization say, in the Bhavna plant goes up and you have more uh, products coming out of there, are the costs of that already sort of baked in currently or would you be doing that with some more incremental costs? 
So right now, uh, you know, obviously all the fixed costs are getting incurred um, irrespective of the, of, the, of the capacity utilization. And that is the reason, you know, the, why the EBITDA is subdued as far as the India operations is concerned. So um, sure. what, what, what will happen is that uh, going forward, uh, I, I think it would be just the variable cost which would be uh, which would be kind of the cost component in terms of uh, you know, what would impact the profitability. Otherwise, the fixed costs are already built into into the costing that we are doing right now. Uh, so what we do is that now we have a robust costing system in India as well, where uh, we are able to price our products in a in a much better manner, and uh, that could also help us in in increasing the overall profitability uh, for for the India operation. We have also put in a slide specifically into the investor presentation, you know, mentioning about all of the changes you know that we have been doing in India in order to um, in in order to bring in process efficiencies as well as um, uh, as well as uh, implementing a lot of quality softwares. Uh, a lot of engineering improvements. So under the guidance of our uh, chief operating officer, Mr. Paolo Armanino, uh, who has taken over since uh, April 2020, you know we are making significant changes in Babla as well as Naroda in order to make sure that uh, that just with the existing operating capacity. So like for example in Babla we have seven units out of uh, 11 units that are that are running right now. So we are uh, we, we are trying to optimally utilize all these seven units in such a manner that these seven units can yield greater revenue than what we were making by operating all the eleven units within Babla site. So th and this and this is getting achieved by way of um, bringing in all of these efficiencies uh, that I mentioned to you about. Um, and uh, and maybe after that you want to. Uh, Maybe speak in greater detail on the on the changes that we are doing on the technical side. Yeah, so uh, what uh, we did also was to uh, in detail evaluate where we can uh, uh, become extremely um, uh, uh, efficient in terms of the output. Where we, as Arshil uh, mentioned, in terms of uh, the plant. Uh, manufacturing better, and uh, we saw uh, some uh, major challenge, uh, not uh, uh, challenges, but uh, uh, some major uh, opportunities inside uh, the plants, which allowed us to do minor changes by bringing in a few extra equipments, which uh, could uh, help uh, us um, uh, bring um, uh, 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 not not uh, allow us to uh, take the burden of uh, not uh, operating uh, the four extra plants that we had. So if you see currently in the seven plants uh, that we have operational, we are doing everything. Uh, we have started to do everything that was uh, done uh, in the uh, previous years post uh, EDQM for all the customers. So every building block to be made for any APIs. Everything is being managed uh, in a much uh, more efficient way and uh, uh, in, a, in a much quicker way as well. The quality aspects are improving substantially uh, uh, in that. So um, the idea is to have a less number of plants, but to have a greater output. And that, uh, of course, will not happen in a single shot. That will happen uh, slowly and steadily. Of course, bringing in equipment and plants uh, within, in a regulatory environment requires customer approvals and the regulatory approvals as well. So that it will take its own course. But this is, in general, uh, the idea that we want to uh, create a maximum uh, output from each and every plant going forward, starting with the current ones that we have. Sure. Finally, two bookkeeping questions. One, uh, your current capex is around 350 to 450 crores, somewhere around that range, right? So, for your future growth, do you expect to spend a similar amount going forward, or would you be spending lower? And secondly, I think around on your net debt number, it's currently around a thousand crore sort of a number currently. Uh, where would you expect that to sit over the next one to two years? Sure. So on the capex, I think our our run rate would remain uh, within that particular range. Uh, so right now, as as you would be aware, the major capex that we are incurring is in France, uh, 
you know where we are uh, we are where we are setting up this digital project for uh, for injectable and that is going to be an expense of about 50 million Swiss francs. Um, apart from that, uh, you know, we are we are upgrading or uh, we are implementing actually uh, SAP across all of the garbage analysis entities uh, except for France for now, where we have implemented the D365, uh, and we are also upgrading our quality systems um, in in garbage analysis as well as in India. So th those are the areas, uh, you know, where the major capex is getting incurred. And uh, we believe that 350 to 450 would be would be a fair range as far as the uh, capex for the next few years is concerned. As far as the net debt is concerned, yeah, we are at uh, roughly about US dollars uh, 122 million as of March 31, 22. Uh, we believe that at its peak, uh, the net debt could be say around 130 million. Uh, but we don't expect it to be uh, to be much greater than that. Okay, so you expect it to increase a bit over the next few years. Yeah. Well, uh, the 130. So it could be like uh, you know at, at the close of a particular period because uh, sometimes what happens is that in order to do a capex, we have to make advance payments to the suppliers, where we will have to draw down the facility from from the bank. And uh, you know, as we keep on generating the cash accruals throughout the course of the year, uh, the net debt um, in, in the next quarter or during the course of the year can again come down. So I'm just talking about that as its peak, it might be say 130 odd million, but otherwise uh, I, I, we don't expect the, the net debt to increase significantly. And uh, in the next two three years, uh, uh, the net debt might even come lower than what it is right now. Having said that, uh, you know, since all of our debt is, is denominated in foreign currency, uh, the cost of debt uh, for us is uh, is not more than four uh, percent. Understood. Uh, that's all from my side, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pramil. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ranveer Singh from Sunny the Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks uh, for taking my question. Uh, my question was related to India cramp. So, uh, can you give uh, a, a number of what operating loss we have made in this quarter in India cramps? So this quarter, uh, the operating loss would be close to about uh, six and a half crores. Yeah, so just I was doing some backward calculations. So operating cost has been in the range of 30 to 35 crore on quarterly basis for last few quarters. And if I consider this 6.5 crore operating loss, so that shows that mm -hmm. operating cost uh, level has gone up to 55 crore. So basically in this particular quarter, obviously uh, the costs have increased, you know, and that has been across the logistics costs, the power and fuel costs, etc. Uh, so yes, I mean, the costs have actually gone up, but uh, again, you know, we are in negotiation with many of our customers uh, to pass on that cost to them. So, you know, this is, if you take the full year basis, uh, then, you know, our operating costs would be similar in the similar range as what you mentioned. Uh, but yeah, on a quarter over quarter basis, you know, this might fluctuate. Okay. And and second on uh, in balance sheet is looking uh, that uh, capital working progress now seven fifty five crore. So if the annual run rate uh, has to be three fifty four fifty crore, so that uh, see uh, that capital working progress is likely to exist in next two years. Yeah, because most of the capital working progress is related to the to the capex that we are doing in France, uh, as well as in Switzerland. So uh, most of this would get capitalized over the next uh, 12 to 15 months time. So that's uh, okay. So uh, maybe by FY24, that would be added to our gross block, right? Yeah, so right now it is it is part of the gross loss, but it's part of the CWIP, uh, and then it would get reclassified to property, plant, and equipment. Okay, fine. So uh, just on ballpark, uh, ballpark number, can you give uh, guidance for uh, where the India cramps is likely to be in next uh, uh, one or two years, if you could give? 
So as far as the uh, India operations is concerned, uh, we expect that uh, in, the, in the current financial year, uh, uh, the overall revenue should be uh, closer to 400 crores. And, uh, you know, we would expect this to, uh, to grow at uh, at least uh, 15% in the, in the year after that, 15 to 20%. Okay, okay. That's good. And, and similarly for uh, Switzerland uh, based grants, if you could give some uh, indicative for growth there for FY23, FY24. So we expect that uh, you know, if you take a three year view, uh, the CAGR should be close to about 10%. So despite uh, this uh, uh, you know, capacity expansion we are doing, uh, so, uh, are you including this in uh, overseas cram business? Or so, uh, the capacity expansion is happening largely in France. In Switzerland, yes, but that's largely on the uh, on the lab development uh, capacity. So, the development because you know right now we are almost full in terms of uh, the development capacity, and we have uh, orders to, uh, to to start worth of about 106 million. We, we can keep on getting more and more molecules for development, but there, there is just no lab uh, capacity. So the incremental revenue of uh, of, of the 10% over over three years uh, that includes uh, this additional lab development capacity and the revenue that would be coming out of it. Okay, fine, fine. And last one, just a clarity that uh, in exceptional items, there's a two item. One is related to, uh, you know, reclaiming land which was uh, contaminated. Another was that certain batches was con contaminated. So are th that, uh, these two events are related or these are two super separate events? No, both are separate events. One is in Carbogenesis, Switzerland, and uh, that, that is related to that particular batch of about 2.4 million. And the second one is related to Netherlands. Uh, which is for the soil reclamation. Okay, so so is, is this going to affect the operation for a longer period? Uh, mm -hmm. No, no, no. So, what, so as far as the Swiss uh, thing is concerned, you know, we have already provided for uh, this particular batch in the in the Q4 of FI22. So uh, you know, one we will be filing for the insurance claim against this particular uh, contaminated batch as well as uh, we'll be filing a claim against the supplier of this particular equipment. So, uh, you know, and, and obviously, you know, we will try to repurify this batch if it is possible. So what will happen is that in, in, the, uh, in the coming quarters, we would see uh, the revenue, uh, worst case, at least the cost of this particular batch being booked as, uh, as, as revenue in, uh, in Carbogenesis AG. So there would be a reversal in the coming quarters for this uh, for this particular cost. Yeah, so this cost may uh, not be very significant, but the thing is that uh, uh, for a client perspective, uh, because the batch was contamination uh, contaminated. So do you see that uh, any any that may create any problem, uh, client not taking uh, you know or, or client having uh, profiling you lesser uh, as compared to you know other uh, suppliers. No, uh, we are we are in close uh, discussions with uh, with the clients. Uh, what happens in the, in the plant was uh, really really a one-time uh, pure uh, incident uh, because the, the 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 material has been maintained as it, as it should be. Uh, so uh, that that particular thing in a, in, a, in a chemical one could happen very rarely, but yes, it happened that that time for that particular client. So uh, I'm in regular contact with. Uh, with the top management uh, of, uh, of that client. They are not losing the continent uh, with carbon dynamics. Uh, quite the contrary, they, they still uh, count on us to, uh, to resolve the issue and, and move forward on, uh, on, on that one. Uh, but yeah, it's a one-time effect uh, that is not very uh, uh, nice to have uh, in, uh, in the relations, but they, they, they understand that they are also uh, uh, industry related and they, are, they, are, they understand fully that those kind of things from time to time, in, even for the best, could happen. Okay. 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 Fine. And, and the last one that you, in commentary, uh, Arpit mentioned that ADQM related remediation that may over by October, uh, you know, September October. So that remediation would be over, or that 
uh, we expect that even facility to you know uh, normalize and uh, start uh, producing and uh, you know uh, contributing to revenue from october november so the remediation will be over much before that uh, we, what we want to do is that we want to introduce the kappa and uh, the, all the kappas where uh, where uh, in many of the cases it is related to the systems uh, it related systems and uh, quality uh, uh, it systems uh, we want to qualify all of them and uh, generate uh, data work of uh, one uh, or two months um, uh, post which, uh, after having this data, we will invite uh, uh, the EDGM to come. And uh, in the best case, if we invite them uh, uh, in October, the best case would be that they come in November. The worst case would be they come in April. So it is, uh, um, uh, uh, but but for us, we will we will be ready much before that. We just want to have the data for us to show the exam of uh, what uh, uh, all kappas we implemented and what it uh, generated after that. Okay, okay, that clarifies. Thanks, thanks, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Naman Jain, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, just a couple of clarifications before I uh, put up my question. Uh, one is on the, Harshal, you said that uh, you're uh, on a company level, you are expecting a 10% uh, CAGR growth over the next two, three years, is it? Uh, that's for uh, Carbogen Ansys. Uh, okay. At a company level, you know, it should be closer to about uh, 12, 12 to 15% if you take a three to five year view. Okay, and on the EBITDA front, uh, I if I heard you correctly, then you said uh, this year FI23 we are targeting a 20% kind of a EBITDA margin blended. Is that right? No, 20% would be for uh, Carbogen Ansys. At a, at a group level, we should be closer to 24%. Okay, and this is expected to reach how much by uh, in next two, three years? So again, uh, taking a three to five year view, uh, you know, our internal expectation would be to go towards uh, 28 to 30 percent. Okay. Uh, uh, secondly, on the debt, while, uh, you know, we have a foreign debt uh, and the cost is 4 percent, how much of it is hedged? So, uh, so basically, what we have is uh, not the not the bad because you know we have corresponding receivables in the same foreign currency as we take the debt in. So most of our debt is, is denominated in U.S. dollars, Swiss francs, uh, and euros. So we have corresponding revenues in those currencies. Uh, because of the timing mismatch, what we do is that we enter into forward contracts. Uh, in order to hedge our export receivables. So the export revenues is what we hedge. And uh, on the debt side, if, if, the only hedge that we would do is if we if we take something in INR or if we take something in US dollars and if most of the revenue is in CHF or Euro, we would have a cross-currency swap. Otherwise, uh, we would keep on hedging our export revenues. So I think effectively almost the entire debt is covered partly by natural hedge and partly by this kind of uh, FX covers. Naman, we can't hear you if you are online. Mr. Jain, if you can hear us, please do respond. Uh, so it seems like we lost the connection for the current participant. We will move to the next question from the line of Shubrata Sarkar from Mount Intra Finance. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi, Shubrata. Hi. So my first question on the, our, uh, this, uh, uh, like, uh, this pipeline of products, so uh, in the camp segment, so we already have uh, like 13 product on the uh, phase three trial. So if you can uh, guide us something on that, like uh, 
despite having such a huge amount of uh, uh, phase 3 trial portfolio in our uh, uh, in our with us like our uh, revenue is not growing to that extent so any guideline or any expectation from your side that out of the 17 what is their uh, tentative timeline of uh, what number of molecule not a individual molecule but like a number of molecule to get uh, commercialized any guideline Uh, although i understand it, you have a, a confidential agreement but as a whole if you can throw some light on that this is my first question um, um, yeah sure um you know all those uh, those uh, those projects in phase 3 the the the, the their future are coming to the market is not in our hands it's completely in, in the hands of our customer and the authority to uh, to uh, to give uh, the NDA or the market authorization to them in the country they are filing. Uh, the, the thing that is, is under, <coughs> under our control is to make sure that we have a solid pipeline of, uh, of early phase projects that could uh, eventually come to late phase and then eventually uh, those late phase programs can, can, can go to the, to the market. That said, uh, once we, we start to look at uh, uh, our uh, historical data, in an average year with such pipeline, we can say that two to three molecules are generally going uh, and getting their market authorization. And once the molecule is in the market, it depends how it's going to be received uh, by the community, uh, uh, how big is the difference with, uh, with the other treatment, uh, Is it a real breakthrough in in in, 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 in treatment of uh, of some uh, of some of the disease, and, and this is particularly difficult even for the marketing uh, teams of uh, of our clients to, to predict. So uh, there is al- always uh, a dimension uh, of uh, of the kind of bet on the future. Uh, the best things we can say, uh, knowing that things are not totally on on, on our control, is to look at. Historical data, and yes, in average, we can say that two to three molecules are coming to the market every year with different uh, uh, fate and different uh, uh, success or, or or speed to uh, to uh, to ramp up. Is that answering your question? Okay. Okay. And second one, sir, uh, a small question. Like uh, uh, in this uh, uh, current quarter filing, we have uh, uh, told that we have written Dahage uh, Dahage uh, plant uh, like land. So any specific reason for that? We don't have uh, like that plan, uh, or what is the uh, thought on that? Sir? Why did we return it back? Yeah. So uh, the only reason why we return it back is that uh, you know we want to post. Uh, Uh, make sure that uh, we we are able to operationalize whatever we want to as far as the Babla and Naroda plants are concerned. So this was basically uh, taken on a long term lease for the future expansion. But since uh, you know uh, we we didn't want to go to the the HSC that for uh, for that particular purpose which was originally planned about five five six years back or maybe even more. Uh, we just thought that it would be better to surrender it and uh, and and get the cash from the government. Okay, so in this respect, are we cutting our expectation on Indian uh, India uh, on India or uh, like what is the reason? That's that is uh, more important question from my side. So so we are trying to uh, increase our, our our operational efficiency in the existing units which are already up and running. Which we believe can do a revenue much more than what we had done earlier with all the units operational in Babla and Naroda. So uh, you know, once we achieve that, after that we can think of uh, of any kind of further expansion or acquiring any land for future expansion. Right now, we try to optimize our facilities that we have in Babla and Naroda, uh, and that is that is exactly what our uh, focus area is. So out of the 11, you know, we have seven units that are up and running. Uh, two of the units we don't expect to start in the in the near future. Well, but those two units can again be used for our future expansion by converting them into GMP compliant facilities. 
Okay. Now, uh, again, can no, I'm sorry, sorry, just to add to that, uh, uh, that uh, the logic behind the Dahej plant uh, was that, uh, you know, initially there was an indication that uh, uh, in Naroda, which is our fine chemical and API facility, uh, 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 there was uh, an indication that it might be called into a green belt zone. Uh, in which case uh, we would not have been able to uh, uh, we would have, we would not be able to run the plants anymore. So the idea behind the Dehj was that uh, to have something uh, which has uh, already an infrastructure ready where we could move uh, instantly um, uh, when if and when uh, this sort of uh, situation arises. But in the past five six years, uh, the indication has uh, gone away, and it doesn't. And, and things are progressing well. Uh, but uh, in terms of um, uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, what is going to be allowed in the Naroda or not, at the same time, what we have, we already have a tremendous land bank. We have 300,000 square meters of land in Babla uh, itself, and we have another 300,000 square meters of land in Bagodra. The uh, challenge in Bagodra is that there was no, there is uh, yet not infrastructure available. Uh, so if uh, uh, Naroda had to be transferred immediately, uh, Naroda plant had to be transferred immediately, then Bagodra would have to be a challenge. But since that is not the case now, then the the hedge uh, land in itself becomes null and void. It was just uh, to have a uh, to, to 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 hold on to to have a to do a risk mitigation. Uh, for our current uh, Naroda business. Okay. Sir, just another follow-up question on this our late stage uh, uh, pipeline. I suppose uh, uh, a significant amount, uh, percentage of that comes from uh, so-called research uh, driven biotech company. And in this scenario where now uh, getting PE funding is difficult, becoming difficult for those kind of companies, are we, uh, uh, is there a challenge to our that portfolio in terms of uh, further development from our client side, sir? Are, are we foreseeing something like this? Uh, not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We already, as Pascal mentioned before, we have uh, almost a uh, hundred million dollars worth of orders in hand yet to start. Uh, so that uh, uh, part of uh, PE being funded is uh, yet not seen. Of course, what happens with this uh, war, uh, we don't know. Um, but as of now, as a company, yeah, but in, in, in any circumstances, if there is a, a, a difficult uh, situation which causes physical uh, issues uh, in the, uh, to the to the human health, pharmaceuticals is the one where the money is going to be poured. Uh, but in any case, uh, maybe I don't know, Pascal, what is your view on this? I don't see uh, anything changing in terms of the funding in pharmaceuticals. No, definitely the, 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 the Chinese plant, and that's what I was saying in the, in the introduction, uh, uh, as demonstrated is, is capability for the, the, the high commitment of our employee to, uh, to, to deliver and keep on delivering uh, uh, during uh, very difficult circumstances. So uh, in that respect, the, 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 all the clients that are uh, experiencing uh, the, 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 the Chinese plant are, are very happy with uh, with uh, the continuous uh, uh, production uh, plan that we have, we have put in place. So, so far, uh, customers have, have been uh, quite happy with, uh, with, uh, with the Chinese plant and they, they, they will continue. Uh, but we cannot ignore a, a global uh, uh, perception of some clients that might see uh, China as a, as a challenge from time to time. And this is the reason why, as well, we also uh, uh, develop locally with uh, with Chinese customers uh, to uh, to diversify our uh, project portfolio for the Chinese unit. So uh, for the time being, it's not an issue. But if it would become an issue, we will already anticipate. Uh, sorry, Pascal, uh, the uh, question was related to the funding in a small biotech. Whether we see that being changed or not for the for the in terms of the revenue uh, for 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 development work that we are going to be doing, the PE funding for the small biotech companies. We can continue this small biotech company definitely. If it was the question.
So no, that was the question. The question was that the P, uh, whether we see uh, the P funding being affected uh, in uh, uh, ah, for the small sure. biotech companies, yeah, which are our potential clients and the current clients. Yeah. So, so uh, there is definitely a, a certain resistance in the, in the late few weeks uh, caused by the war. Uh, and we are here and there are some, some major capital uh, uh, investors, especially in the US, that they are cherry picking the project and, and how they are going to, 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 to finance some projects. That said, uh, uh, the last two years uh, has been uh, extraordinary, uh, uh, huge in terms of, of uh, money flowing. And uh, just in the US, more than 200 billion has been spent in the, in the pharma industry, and a lot of projects have been funded with a lot of money. And of course, all those projects uh, have sufficient funds to, to, to carry on. So uh, we should not see uh, any, uh, any short term issue on that. We just have to keep an eye on uh, how people will perceive the, 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 the global uh, situations with. Uh, the conflict uh, in, in Ukraine and uh, if the, the VC uh, uh, capital uh, uh, are, are still very uh, uh, careful uh, to fund new uh, projects with new biotechs, especially in the US market, which give the trend to the global market. Okay, so last uh, bookkeeping question or uh, like uh, some thoughts, uh, uh, like sir, uh, we have uh, always some foreign currency, but we had debt. So now from Indian perspective, sir, one, one thing is that in a higher inflation situation, debt, uh, like cost of debt or interest rate is going up. Uh, on the contrary, uh, like uh, Indian currency is also uh, like uh, uh, fluctuating, although uh, is uh, depreciating. So in this context, although we have some natural rates, sir, isn't it prudent that we pay back or uh, uh, like uh, reduce some amount of debt by way of other capital re uh, restructuring? Uh, just a thought from my side, if you can give some comment on that. Sure. So, uh, so, so the, 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 the strategy is very clear. So, you know, right now, while the rupee has been depreciating against the dollar and uh, even the other currencies, uh, what we tend to do is that we would incre increase our forward cover uh, for the future receivables. Because today, if we hedge for a period of one year, we are able to uh, get, a, get a forward rate of uh, uh, in excess of 80 rupees, uh, dollar to the rupee. So what we will do is we'll keep on uh, increasing our forward cover for the future receivables so that uh, the future realizations for the revenue happen at a, at a higher exchange rate than what it is right now. That is number one. Number two, on the debt side, uh, as a strategy, what we have been doing is that uh, taking the loan either in foreign currency directly uh, linked to the SOFA, or uh, we have been taking it in INR at around 6-7%, uh, uh, and swapping it into foreign currency, which helps us to reduce our cost of borrowing on the on the long term side as well as on the short term side. And uh, even with the interest rates increasing in India as well as overseas, uh, the way it helps us is that overall the forward premium on some of these currencies, especially the Swiss franc, where we have a sizable amount of uh, revenue coming from. We are able to uh, book more forward contracts for for that particular currency, and that will help us in improving the exchange rate for the future as well. So, in that way, uh, the currency fluctuation and um, you know the higher interest uh, rate scenario due to inflation, as you pointed out, uh, really doesn't impact us. And having a good amount of liquidity on the balance sheet, which is largely invested in high yielding bonds as well as uh, as well as in fixed deposits also helps us to to get a positive carry on that uh, particular investment so i mean just to add um, in india hardly we have any revenue in rupees so entire revenue worldwide is in foreign currency and therefore if the debt is in foreign currency there is always a equalization factor so, uh, of course, it does impact when you translate all currencies into the mother currency. But in effect, 
uh, I think we are very much fully hedged and very closely monitoring the situation. Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritwik Shet from One Up Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, good evening. Uh, so I have a few questions. Uh, firstly, on the other expenses, you know, there are a few one offs uh, in the quarter, as we have mentioned. So, at what level should we expect the other expenses to settle at? Uh, because previously, we are somewhere around uh, about uh, say 75 to 85 crores on a quarterly run rate. Uh, which has moved to 145 crores because of one off. So, so, at what level should one expect uh, these other expenses to settle at? So, what, what what we expect is that uh, the other expenses would remain uh, elevated, in, you know, and again, it depends upon the many of the global factors. So, the other expenses would remain elevated, um, and maybe we can uh, take a run rate of close to about uh, 100 crores. Um, as, uh, as, as, a, as a ballpark figure. Having said that, what our endeavor is to uh, do is to uh, pass on most of the of the incremental cost uh, uh, to our customers by building it into the sales price. And uh, you know that is something that uh, uh, we are negotiating with our customers, especially when the contracts are coming up for renegotiation. Um, so the future purchase orders can come at a higher selling price. So overall, what we want to do is to protect our, our operating margins at any point. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what, what would be the uh, co uh, increase in uh, you know, the uh, fresh orders uh, from current level to, uh, say, uh, for complete parcel? Uh, sorry, Rith, can, you, can you please repeat your question? Yeah, sorry. So, what would be the increase in prices that we would have to take uh, for the upcoming order for a uh, complete pass-through of these uh, increase in other expenses? So that would depend upon uh, product to product, uh, customer to customer. And, uh, you know, obviously we will have to take into consideration the uh, some of the long-term relationships that we carry with some of these customers and how critical they are. But I think anywhere between uh, five to six percent is is something that should be uh, ideally passed on. Okay, sure. Okay. So my next question is regarding uh, you know uh, the trans business excluding India. If I look at the trans business uh, that we have put in the segment, and it's about fifteen hundred to excluding India. So uh, uh, you mentioned that uh, we can uh, look at a 10% CAGR. So would it be fair that this entire piece could uh, grow at a 10% CAGR, taking a medium term three to five year view? Yes. Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, and uh, one of the other incremental business that would be coming in uh, from the start of the next financial year would be uh, the revenues coming from the Greenfield project. Uh, that that we are um, that that we are currently undertaking in France. So that will be the incremental revenue that would be added uh, to the Crams X India. Right. Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, so uh, my next question is related on the capex. Uh, what would be the uh, capex for FI23? For FI23, uh, we expect a similar kind of capex number as the last year. Uh, which was uh, close to about 60 million. Okay, so so more or less, uh, you know, with increase in uh, revenue from uh, the India business, uh, we should be more or less sufficient uh, to fund this internally. Yeah. So what? Uh, uh, so right now we have the entire capex that we are doing uh, completely tied up for uh, with, with the banking syndicate. However, and again, you know, the, the cost of borrowing is quite low uh, because all of it is going to be in, in foreign currency. Uh, so there would be, say, uh, certain quarters or, uh, you know, certain periods where the, where the debt would remain elevated. However, uh, you know, with the cash accruals that we have been generating throughout the course of the year, you know, we might either pay off the debt, but it, it really doesn't make sense because uh, of the cost of funding. Rather than that, uh, the cash accruals would uh, would remain invested into into triple A rated high yielding bonds. 
Okay. On, on a net debt basis, uh, we believe that 130 odd million should be kind of the the peak. Sure, sure. Okay. And and uh, my final question is on the working capital. Uh, we have seen working capital increase significantly in uh, current year, despite uh, this a uh, ten percent increase in uh, revenue. So so you know what would be the key reason and uh, where do we expect this to settle at? Uh, say uh, in FY23 and then you know on a sustainable basis, what kind of uh, working capital base should we uh, work with? So, so Rithvik, uh, one of the key factors in calculating the working capital for us is uh, is also considering uh, the advances that we receive from our customers, uh, which yeah. is right now classified under uh, other current liabilities. So if okay. you see, uh, the other current liabilities have increased by almost 100 crores. So uh, w w what we do is that for for any development project, uh, as a thumb rule, we will not be starting any development project unless and until we get a 30% advance uh, from mm -hmm. our customers. So all of that is classified under other current liabilities. So if you net off uh, uh, the other current liabilities from the debtors, inventory, uh, and calculate the working capital, I think we are we are fairly uh, we are fairly covered. We are fairly in line with what we had last year. So we don't expect the working capital uh, to increase substantially from here on. Okay. Uh, is it possible to quantify this uh, number of advances received for FI21 and 22? Yeah, so for FI22, uh, it is around uh, 250 crores. And uh, for FI21, it is uh, close to about 150 crores, outstanding as on March 31. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because that yeah. increase in working capital is about 200 crores. So, uh, right. for FI22. Right, so the incremental 100 crores is, uh, yes. is largely on account of the increase in the revenue by about 240 crores. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, sir, sir, one uh, would like to see one last question. Uh, you mentioned that we are looking at 400 crores of uh, Trans India revenue for FY23. So, uh, what do, what could be the uh, margin uh, for this uh, 400 crores? Would it be as high as 45 to 50 percent? Total total revenue. Total so 400 crores would be the total revenue for the India operation, and uh, of this, uh, the Trans revenue should be at least uh, 50 to 260 crores. Uh, the, the, the blended margin uh, should be anywhere between uh, 25 to 30 percent. 25 to 30 percent on 400 crores. That's correct. Okay, sure. Okay, sir. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. I know that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Arpit Vyas for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, moderator, and thank you, everyone, for joining the call. Uh, it was a pleasure answering all the questions. Uh, we hope uh, that we have answered according uh, to your uh, satisfaction. As said before, this is going to be, uh, so now we are going to have a, uh, this is going to be a year of turnaround, and we are going to see uh, many exciting things and uh, major improvements coming uh, our way uh, globally. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, we, uh, you all are as excited as uh, we are. And uh, uh, we will uh, see you uh, next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We are Carbogen Amsis Limited. That concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect.